as we deal with last day events. And tonight would be really, really, really exciting as we go forward in the name of Jesus. So I just want to say welcome to each and every one of you and to those of you who would be joining us or who have joined us already on Facebook. We want to say a pleasant evening to you. I want to encourage you to take the time after we have prayed uh, to share via uh, your Facebook page, our, our live stream, and to also give a call to those members who are, are absent at the present time, just reminding them that we have started this evening's program and we look forward to have them with us as we build up our uh, uh, this program and prepare ourselves for the soon advent of Yehovah. Let us pray as we see God's presence with us here today. Eternal Father and our God, great is thy faithfulness and greatly to be praised. We come before thy divine throne tonight, thanking you for the wonderful privilege that you have given to us through your son Yeshua to approach your throne, to assemble around the throne. We recognize as we behold in our mind's eye the thousands and thousands and thousands of angels that surround your throne, giving glory and giving praise to you, that we are but nothing in thy sight. Yet you have invited us uh, to come before you. We ask that you will be with us, therefore, giving us a special anointing, touching our lips and our ears with that live call from heaven so that we can minister to others the word of truth. You take full charge, great Jehovah, as you reveal through your Holy Spirit the time in which we live and you cause us to be prepared and ready ourselves for your soon coming. We commit all things into your care keeping, bind the strong man, take control of the airwaves, take control of social media so that your word can go forward to those whom you will allow to hear this truth in the night. We bless you and we praise you and thank you for hearing and answering our prayer. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes, so as I said, we are very, very thankful uh, to be here. I can see so many of you on right now. Still keep sharing, still keep calling, still keep inviting people to be on, uh, because tonight would be a very special night that they do not want to miss. Amen. I want to introduce our topic tonight. Tonight, we are talking on Matthew chapter 24 and verse 15. Matthew 24 and verse 15 is the prophecy that we'll be looking at tonight, the abomination of desolation. I am particularly interested in this because it is one of the most conspicuous prophecies given by Yeshua that would identify his soon return. So let us begin in verse 14 of Matthew 24. It says, I would read in your hearing, verse 14 and 15. I read. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached unto all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. And when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whosoever read it, let him understand. This very text of scripture is again given to us in the book of Mark, Mark chapter 13 and verse 14, that will help us to be able to understand this prophecy some more. It says, But when ye shall see the abomination of desolation 
spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing where it ought not, let him that readeth understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which be in Judea, let, the, let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes, and warn to them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world, to this time, nor ever shall be. And except those days shall be shortened, there shall no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be so, shall be shortened. Beloved, this sign calls on us to be in a state of readiness for the tribulation that is about to come upon this world and the imminent return of Yeshua the Messiah in his second advent. Mark the words of the prophet well, Yeshua. In Matthew 24, 14, he said, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached into all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall, then shall the end come. I know sometimes we look around and we see so many things happening. We see so many people say they are preaching the gospel. You have people down in Africa, you have people all over the world, people are dying in certain places for what they call the gospel. But the gospel of the kingdom, according to the Bible, is the good news of repentance, the fulfillment of the time and the eminent ushering in of the kingdom of Yehovah. Look at Mark chapter 1, verses 14 and 15, and you would see what the gospel is. The Bible says, Now after that John was put into pr in prison, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. So this gospel is what must be preached. This gospel, not every gospel, this gospel of the kingdom. And saying, verse 15, the time is fulfilled. Watch the word now. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. During the time when this gospel is going forward, you've got to look for the sign of the Antichrist power known as the abomination of desolation. This is what the Bible is telling us. And this power, the abomination of desolation, is a power that was spoken of by Daniel, the prophet. And Daniel would tell us that this power was to set itself up in the location known as the holy place. I want you to follow me very carefully again in the scriptures. Back to the book of Mark chapter 13 and verse 14 and Matthew 24, 15. I read again in your hearing. And when you shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing where it ought not, then let them that be in Judea flee to the mountain. It's a time of urgency. When he therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whosoever readeth, let him understand. Now the prophet E.G. White says to us in Manuscript 77, 1899, and in the book, Last Day Events, page 18, this. Christ forewarned his disciples of the destruction of Jerusalem and the signs to take place prior to the coming of the Son of Man. 
the whole of the 24th chapter of Matthew is a prophecy concerning the events to precede, precede this event and the destruction of Jerusalem. Listen carefully. The destruction of Jerusalem is used to typify the last great destruction of the world by fire. So let's keep that in mind as we go forward to unfold the prophecy. Again, we are told in Testimonies for the Church, Volume 5, page 753, this. While these prophecies received a partial fulfillment at the destruction of Jerusalem, they have a more specific application in the last days. So this principle must be guiding us as we seek to unfold this prophecy and what is happening in the last days. That they had a partial fulfillment in the destruction of Jerusalem. That must be the principle guiding us as we unfold their fulfillment in the last days. Now, one of the first things we want to do tonight, I want to move as slowly as I can, is that of the interpreting of the symbols of this prophecy. Let's go back again to Matthew 24, 15, identify the symbols and interpret them before we go deeper into the prophecy. According to Matthew 24, 15, we read, When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Amen? Whosoever read it, let him understand. So you have two symbols that we want to unfold here in order to help us to understand the prophecy. They are, one, the abomination of desolation, and two, the holy place. Now, the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet. So Yeshua was very specific as to this abomination of desolation. It was spoken of by Daniel the prophet. Therefore, if we are to have a proper understanding of the abomination of desolation, we must go back to the book of Daniel and the, and the prophet so that we can get a clear understanding of what this, this abomination, abomination of desolation is. In Daniel chapter 11, and verse 31 and Daniel 12, 11, we will read of this power called the abomination of desolation. I read in your hearing. In Daniel eleven thirty one, 31, and it says, and arms shall stand on his path and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength and shall take away the daily and they shall place the abomination that make it desolate. Chapter 12 and verse 11 says, And from the time of the daily, that the daily shall be taken away, and the abomination that make a desolate set up, there shall be a, be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. Now I cannot go into the fullness of this prophecy, but I could explain you what it means, and at another time we can go into the details of these prophecies. One, if you study Daniel chapter 11, Daniel chapter 11 is, is giving us a history of the Roman church coming through the time in connection with other nations. So when it's, it speaks here in verse 31, an arm shall stand on his path, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and shall take away the daily, and they shall place the abomination of desolation, this is what it's speaking about. Listen carefully. We are speaking of a time when, let me explain first this. The daily as spoken of here and the abomination of desolation are two desolating power. They, they represent Rome in its pagan form, that's the daily, and Rome in its papal form. That's the abomination that make it desolate. Now, through civil, the civil power and the armies of the civil power that supported the papacy when it came in into play, 
the daily, which was the Rome, pagan Rome, was removed. Rome, who was ruled under the bishops and emperors and so forth, and in the place of Rome, you had the papacy called the abomination of desolation being set up. You would read these things in the book of Revelation as well, uh, chapter 13, when it says the beast, pagan Rome, gave to him, papal Rome, his power and seat and great authority. That's the same prophecy. Now, so we are talking here about that of uh, the work that, the, that took place with the transfer of power from pagan Rome onto papal Rome. The, it is a now, now Christ in Matthew identified the abomination of desolation and the work that would be done under her. So when he said, when he shall see the abomination of desolation standing stand in the holy place or standing where it ought not to, then we know that it is speaking of the papacy that will seek to stand in the holy place. Now I'm going to talk to you on the holy place in a while. Now, I want to read for you a statement that will help you to understand this better. It is taken from the book Great Controversy, page 26. 1888 edition. It says, Jesus declared to the listening disciples the judgments that were to fall upon the apostle, apostate Israel, and especially the retributive vengeance that would come upon them for their rejection and crucifixion of the Messiah. Unmistakable signs would precede the awful climax. The dreaded hour would come suddenly and swiftly. And the Savior warned his disciples, listen what he told the disciples, when he therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, whoso read it, let him understand. Then let him which shall be in Judea flee to the mountains. So let's go back to what she says, continue here. Now she's explaining this now. When the idolatrous standards of the Roman of the Romans should be set up on holy ground, which extended some fulums outside the city walls, then the followers of Christ were to find safety in flight. When the warning signs should be seen, those who would escape must make no delay throughout the land of Judea as well as in Jerusalem itself the signal for flight must be immediately obeyed. Now, this understanding here helps us to understand what happened in the prophecy on the pagan room with the church in the days of Christ or just after Christ. So follow me carefully. We have to now take that, remember the, the prophecy of Matthew 24 has a twofold application. It is a partial application was fulfilled in the uh, destruction of Jerusalem by the Roman army. We have to now take the same symbols and make them applicable to today under the papacy because the prophecy is, has been given to us at the time when the abomination of desolation, that is the papacy, is in control. So the spirit of prophecy identifies the abomination of desolation as the idolatrous standards of the Romans. I want you to get that. That was set up in Jerusalem under the siege of Jerusalem around AD 70. Some of you would be familiar with this day. The Roman army, led by future emperor Titus, besieged Jerusalem, the center of the Jewish uh, uh, rebel resistance, 
in the Roman province of Judea. You, we, if you read anything, uh, if you don't have much literature, just take great controversy and read the chapter, The Destruction of Jerusalem. And you would see how totally Rome under Titus devastated and destroyed Jerusalem. Now, this abomination of desolation is the Roman power in Daniel 11, 31 and Daniel 12, 11, the Roman power is its sec in its second incarnation as the papacy is identified as the abomination of desolation. Now, thus it is that at the time of the fulfillment of this prophecy in Matthew 24, 15, it would be the Roman power, not pagan Rome, as it happened under the partial fulfillment in AD 70, but paper Rome that would be take, making its move to stand in the holy place. So the Jerusalem was identified as the holy place. And the pagan Rome was identified as that power that stood in the holy place in its partial fulfillment. Now we must begin to explain how Rome, in its final fulfillment of this prophecy, when Rome is existing, as the, as, as the Roman Catholic institution, the papacy governed by the Pope, how, how this power will stand in the holy place and how and what would, that speaks to us about the soon return of the Messiah. Let us deal a little with the second symbol, the holy place. In the partial fulfillment of the prophecy, you had two literal nations fulfilling the prophecy, which were Jerusalem and Rome. I hope you are following me there. Two literal nations, Jerusalem and Rome. Rome entered Jerusalem, which was then considered the holy place or the holy land, and Rome overthrew Jerusalem. Now you've got to understand something, that when Rome overthrew Jerusalem in AD 70 and destroyed, it also destroyed the temple. The, the destruction of the temple signifies Rome destruction of the system of worship given to the Jews to give to the world that they may be saved. Now, according to Bible prophecy, therefore, in the last days, Rome is to function as an apostate church carrying out the work of the Antichrist under papal Rome. I hope I'm taking my time here enough and that you're understanding. Should we not conclude then that Jerusalem would be represented by the church that would take the place of, Ju of Jerusalem in the last days? Let me go over there so you will get it clear. So in the partial fulfillment of Matthew 24, you had two literal nations. You had the, the Jerusalem and you had Rome as a, as a nation. And you'd see what Rome did, infiltrating Jerusalem, which was was considered the holy land and how she broke down their system, destroyed the temple, killed thousands of Jews and things like that. Now we are coming to the last days. The, 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 we're seeing now the same room, but represented by a church called the papacy or Roman Catholicism. Now, if that is true concerning the abomination of desolation or Rome, we should also understand that the Holy Land will represent the church that would take the place of Jerusalem in the last days. Let's call the church, this church that would take the place of the Jews, Christianity. 
What do we call it? Christianity. Through such teachings as replacement theology, some of you would have heard that term for the first time, replacement theology, or supersessionism, fundamentally, Christianity believed that the New Testament church has taken the place of the Jewish Jews and what they believe and practice. It is among Christianity who are considered God's people. You notice I'm saying Christianity, not merely a specific denomination, but Christianity who believe that, that God has rejected the Jews and has taken them to finish the work. Notice that it is among Christianity who are considered God's church today that the abomination of desolation will stand. Very important. That simply means that the idolatrous standards of Rome under the papacy or Catholicized Romanism will set up its standard among Christianity. And Christianity would take in almost every Christian denomination today. Notice the words of the prophet again in Great Controversy, page 26. When the idolatrous standards of Romanism, what you would standards of Romanis, of Roman, of the Romans, should be set up in the on holy ground, in holy ground, which extends some furlongs outside the city walls. That's in the partial fulfillment of Matthew 24. Then the followers of Christ were to find safety in flight. Take that thought and apply it to the papacy today, setting up its standard among Christianity, its standards among Christianity. Let us talk, therefore, as to what are the standards of Rome, that is, of the abomination of desolation, or what we call the papacy. The standard, a standard is a document that provides a set of agreed upon rules, guidelines, or characteristics for activity or their results. Simple as that. Standards are established by authority and serve as a model or pattern for guidance, how the church would be guided. Amen? In addition, let us understand there are, there are six chief commandments of the Catholic Church, the abomination of desolation. And Catholics are to adhere to these laws. I will show you them first, and then I will show you how these standards of Roman Catholicism, if not all of them, at least some of them, has become the standards that are set up within Christianity. So one, attended Mass on all Sundays and Holy Days of Obligation. So immediately we have Sunday service as a part of the standards of Roman Catholicism that has become one of the standards of Christianity today. Two, fast and abstain on appointed days. So there is a fasting on appointed days. So what has happened is that the papacy, the abomination of desolation, has set up their appointment appointed days, and the church, Christianity, has adopted it, or, or, the, or Rome has set up a standard among Christianity. I'll tell you all some of those days as well. Confessions of sins once a year. Receive Holy Communion at Easter. You know that not only Catholicism, but other Christian churches also celebrate Easter. Contribution to support the church, observe the law of the church concerning marriage. Now, in, an, in, the, in Roman Catholicism, that is the abomination of desolation, you have 
feasts and holy days. From the earliest days of the church, it is said that Easter has been considered the central Christian feast. Watch it, eh? The central Christian feast. Now, Easter is really a pagan festival that was adopted by the abomination of desolation or Roman Catholicism, in which Christianity has adopted as part of her liturgy. Easter dates in, is calculated based on the phase of the moon and the spring equinox and so forth. Now, next in importance, all of these are the standards of the abomination of desolation. Next in the importance are the festival of Christmas, including Advent, the 40 days before the celebrated day of the birth of Christ, as well as events afterwards. Then you have things like Whit Sunday, which is supposed to be uh, Pentecost, and you have uh, things like the descent of the Holy Spirit. If you want more information on those things, you can Google the Introduction to the Catholic Religion, Beliefs, Practice, and History. Introduction to the Catholic Religion, Beliefs, Practice, and History. Understanding then the, some of the standards, there's much more, but I'm just dealing with a few tonight because the truth I want to get over to you. So the standards of the Catholic Church, the abomination of desolation or papal room, is, 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 is what is being set up among Christianity today. And this setting up of the standards of room within the Christian church today indicates the imminent return of Yeshua as indicated in Matthew 24, 15. But this is not the end of the prophecy. We are going into some more that Matthew 24 speaks to us about. And I want you to follow very carefully here because it's going to get very deep, but you would be able to understand. In the setting up of the abomination of desolation in the holy place, the intent of this power was to destroy the truths of Yehovah's standards. Follow what I'm saying now. The purpose, the intent of the abomination of desolation was to destroy Yehovah's standard. Now, let's go back to the partial fulfillment of Matthew 24 with the destruction of Jerusalem. When Rome entered Jerusalem and they destroyed, they particularly destroyed the temple because they wanted to destroy the worship system. This is very important. Yehovah's standards is what is the, the papacy or the abomination of a desolation is after as they set up their standard in that of Christianity, the church. So Yehovah's standards is his will and is expressed in obedience to his commandments, statutes, and judgments. Keep that in mind. As an expression of obedience to his will, the worshiper finds themselves observing the holy appointed times given by Jehovah in Leviticus 23, which includes the seven-day Sabbath. For this reason, for this reason, the abomination of desolation will seek to destroy the believer's faith in the appointed times of Jehovah. This is what Daniel prophecy tells us about the work of the abomination of desolation in the in Daniel chapter 7 and verse 25, when it says, he shall speak great words against the Most High, that's the same abomination, the papacy, Roman Catholicism, and he shall speak great words against the Most High, and we are all the saints of the Most High, and he shall think to change times and laws. So this is where the, the, the setting up of the standard of the abomination of desolation in Christianity, and it is now working through its standard to remove Jehovah's standard. That's the prophecy that the Bible tells us. When we see this happening within the Christian church, don't, don't get caught up with just denomination, the Christian church, then it is time to get ready 
to take flight. We know the standards of Jehovah in, in his feast days. You have the seven-day Sabbath and the abomination of desolation. I've sought to supplant that with the first day of the week. You have Passover. We had sought to surpass that, uh, supplant that with Easter. Uh, the Feast of First Food, supplanted by Easter Sunday. Feast of Week, supplanted by Witch Sunday. And you can go on and on and on through the Feast of Trumpet, Day of Atonement, Feast of Tabernacle, seeking to supplant that with Christmas. Observe that the last three feasts, and now I'm coming to something here that you've got to follow carefully, pray and listen. The last three feasts deal specifically with things concerning the coming of Yeshua, the return of Yeshua the second time. This is important. Therefore, whereas the abomination seeks to plant uh, itself in the holy ground of the church, I'm going to come to Jerusalem and what is happening down there in a while, as it seeks to plant itself on holy ground, that is in the church, listen carefully, it will particularly focus on these feasts that has to do with the second coming. Because the, the prophecy of Matthew 24 is telling us about the signs of his coming and the three feasts is going to particularly call the church's attention to the second advent of, Yesh of Yeshua. Go with me to the book of Acts chapter 1, and you would see something there that pertains to the second coming. Listen, I'm reading from verses 9 through 11. I want to zero in on this now. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they, they looked steadfastly towards heaven, as he went up, Behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Hear what it said. Which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go. That second coming. Now listen. We know for a fact that Yeshua ascended upon Mount Olives and he will return to that very spot in his second advent. Now this is important because I'm now about to take you into some things happening down in the Middle East there. This fact is brought out in Zechariah 14 and I'm reading from verse 2. I read. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses, rifles, and the women ravished, and half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. You just have to think what is happening with Israel and Palestine right now. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations, as when he fought in the day of battle. Listen what's happening now. And his feet, and his feet, hmm, shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, that is, in his second coming, which is before Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof towards the east and towards the west, and there shall be a great valley, and half of the mountain shall we move towards the north and half towards the south. Now, Satan understands, and so is the papacy, the abomination of desolation. He, he, Satan understands the significance of Jerusalem as a location. The Jerusalem as a, as a location. He understands that the Messiah is to return and he would be landing on the holy city. He understands that the church, the Christian church, should be focused on that particular prophecy of Zechariah 14. For this cause, 
to deceive the nation, he must bring the Antichrist to that particular location. Are you hearing what I'm saying? In order to deceive Christianity, who have already accepted a standard as part of their worship system, the final thing that the abomination of desolation would have to do, the final thing that Satan would have to do to deceive Christianity to its fullness is to bring the Antichrist off of that location where Christ says he is going to land. Stay with me now. So listen, as you see the war taking place between Israel, the Palestine, Hamas, and all of that, understand what is behind it. Understand that the struggle there, which I'll explain to you more as I move along, is about occupying that place so that the Antichrist could present himself as the panacea for the world's problems of famine and wars and earthquakes come as he stands upon that particular spot called the Holy Ground. So I'm giving you the both sides. Holy Ground as it relates to the church and Holy Ground as it relates to Jerusalem. Now, what is, ham what is hindering the papacy through the Pope to take full control of that spot of ground in Jerusalem. Go with me to the book of Daniel, chapter 11, verses 44 and 45. Ellen White said of this prophecy, it has almost come to its end. You just look at it. She says it has almost come. The, the prophecy of Daniel 11 is almost to its end. Listen what it says. But tidings out of the east, mark that now, and out of the north shall trouble him. That is the papacy, the abomination of desolation. Therefore he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and utterly to make away many, to get rid of those. That is the people east and north. And he shall, when he has done that, remove them because they are obstacles, he shall plant the tabernacle of his palace between the seas of the glorious holy mountain. Now, this have a twofold meaning. Planting his tabernacle simply means he would first establish his standard of abominations, false worship, false holy days among the Christianity, and then that spot of a ground that is the most holy spot to Christianity, he will now control. So he shall plant his tabernacles of his palace between the seas of the glorious holy mountain, yet he shall come to his end and none shall help him. Let's talk a little bit on that. The philosophy of Islam is said to be the tiding of the East. And and the philosophy of communism is the tiding of the North. And these two philosophies is what is troubling or hindering the movement of the papacy. At the center of Jerusalem, follow me carefully now, is an area about 309 acres. And though that spot of a ground is, 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 is what is considered a major holy is a major holy site for the three monotheistic religions of the world. You have there the Al-Aqsa Mosque, which is the third holiest site in the world for Muslims. You have there the Western Wall, known in the West as the Wailing Wall. It is a portion of ancient limestone wall in the old city of Jerusalem that forms part of a larger retaining wall of the hills known to Jews and Christians as the Temple Mount, 
part of the holiest site in the world for the Jews. Then you have there the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, which marks the place where many Christian believes Jesus was crucified, entombed, and resurrected. Amen? Now, I want to show you something about this Church of the Holy Sepulchre. This church and its surroundings and buildings was built under Constantine. We know the lineage of Constantine, and we know the Pope is the one came down through that particular lineage, if I should use that word. So the church and its building, it was done by Constantine in about the 4th century and destroyed by Al-Hakim in uh, 1009 and was later re um, reconstructed with modification by Emperor Constantine uh, the ninth, uh, and also that of the Crusaders. Now, all I'm showing you there is that these three religious sects, all monotheistic religion, believing in one God, are all seeing the same spot as the place to occupy as the most holy place here on earth. But also remember that while they are doing that, that Christ have already prophesied that it is on that spot he is going to return. So you have Islam, who is represented by Palestine. Do you know that 93% of the population of Palestine, they are Muslims? Then you have the Jews represented by Israel, backed by America, and most of the European and Western nations, like France, Germany, Italy, Britain, Britain you have Australia, Canada, New Zealand, all of them back in the Jews, the, the Israel. Now, then you have Christianity represented by the Vatican. It is an accepted position worldwide that the, that uh, the that Christianity is represented by the Pope. That's not something you should be unaware of. Christ, not not Catholics, you know. Christianity is represented by the Pope. So, the, so Christianity is what is represented on that spot uh, by that of uh, the, the, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Now let's go back again to Daniel chapter 11 and verse 44. And, and yes, verse 44. But tidings out of the east and the north shall trouble him. Trouble him with concerning what? Concerning the fact that he wants to set up his place on that spot of a ground because he's in opposition to the Son of God. Stay with me now. So the first philosophy that stood in Rome's way was communism. I'm not going to be going into too, too much details on this, but I'm going to help you to see what is happening here. This was partly removed when on, uh, on November the 9th, 1989, five days after half a million people gathered in East Berlin in a mass, pro mass protest, the Berlin Wall crumbled. This signal, the fall of communism, leaving only five communist countries existing in the world today. Now, yes, you still have powerful China there and, and about four others with her, but the war is still going on to bring China to her knees. It's not going to be a war of bombs. It's going to be an economic war. It's going to be a war in technology. It's going on right now so that the papacy can have its way. So this marked the removal of communism as an ideology that would hinder the move of the papacy for world dominance. Now, three years later, in 1999, the next ideology that would be standing in the way of Rome, the abomination of desolation, came under attack. 
This is identified as tidings out of the East, Islam. You had in, in, in 1991, or 19, yes, the Persian Gulf War, also known as Operation Desert Storm, or the first Gulf War began in 1991 after President Saddam Hussein of Iraq ordered the invasion and occupation of neighboring Kuwait. We know that in early of, of August of 1990. So alarmed by these actions, Arab powers of Saudi Arabia, Egypt, called on the United States and other Western part nations to intervene. And we know that they called on Saddam Hussein to leave Kuwait. He did not follow it. And now then we had Operation Desert Storm begin with a massive US-led uh, offense after 42 days of relentless attack, U.S. President George Bush, H.W. Bush, declared a ceasefire on February the 20th. By that time, most of Iraq in Kuwait had either surrendered or fled. Now, what do you think it is? Saddam Hussein and Iraq was sort of a, the pinnacle or example of Islam that the people were looking to as one of the most powerful uh, Muslim nation upon the earth. To break Islam, they, there is where they had it to start because the two sets of news from the East and from the North was impeding. Now, why America? Before I finish with, you, with this now, why America? America is identified in the book of Revelation as the one that is carrying the beast. But America, not simply as a nation locate in, in its specific location, but through its, its ideology of democracy. Uh, we, America do not have to get Islam to convert to the, to, to that of Christianity. Neither does she have to get the communist nations uh, to convert to Christianity either. All she has to do is to get them to accept some level, if not all, of the system of democracy. Once she is able to do that, they could be controlled to have the abomination of desolation set up where he wants to be to deceive the people in that holy ground. So now go back to Daniel 11.45 with me, the ultimate goal here. And he shall plant his tabernacles of his palace between the seas in the glorious holy mountain, yet he shall come to his end and none shall help him. So Rome, Rome, hear me now, Rome, the abomination of desolation, as a religious political power will plant its tabernacles between the seas of the glorious holy mountain. It's all there already. This symbolic uh, 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 gesture would represent Christianity, listen carefully, on that specific ground. And in that act, the papacy would establish, be established as one of the dominant philosophy for Jews, Muslim, and Christians would be represented in the Holy Land by the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Follow me carefully. Will Rome be able to get the two religions to remove their symbols of the Al-Aqsa Mosque and the Wailing Wall from the Mount? I don't know. What I do know is that through the system of democracy, through ecumenism, which they would unite under monotheism, and the philosophy of humanism, Rome with the Pope as the head 
of the one world religion would plant his tabernacle between the seas of the glorious holy mountain, according to Daniel 7, 25. So let's read what Jesus says as we get ready. Listen carefully. And when ye therefore shall see, it's happening already, the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place. Let him that read it understand. Then, this is the sense of urgency that this message should be bringing to us. Then let him which be in Judea flee into the mountain. It is not time to spend your days and your energy after worldly things. It is not time for God's people to be gathering into cities, but be moving to the countryside. Listen again. It is not the time. Watch it. The, 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 the people under the destruction of the Jerusalem did not read the signs and they get trapped in the city. You and I, if we do not begin to cut away from the things of this world, if we do not to start to, to adjust ourselves to the simplicity of country living and walk away from the cities, beloved, we would be trapped as did the people, hallelujah, and, and, and in the days of Jerusalem. Let him which is on the house top, house top not come down to take anything out of the house. Don't look back. It's time to move. This is a serious time. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. We, we've got to take up an attitude of setting down material things, beloved. We've got to start to empty our lives and make ourselves less dependent on the material things of this world. He said, pray that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day, because it's going to be very, very uh, difficult. I could go through all what would have happened to the Jews the down there and how the Sabbath day coming, but it is saying the burden would be so heavy as the tribulation comes on the church, you need to be ready. For he says, for then shall there be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor ever shall be. And he said the days is going to be shortened. Amen? He said there will arise false Christ, false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders. You could imagine the entire world, and you have people, wow, well, well, I have a few things to tell you still, who would be looking to Jerusalem as the most holiest place. And you could ima imagine out of that spot, false Christ and false prophets coming and going out into the world with the papacy, the Pope as the chief of them, that would be a heavy work of deception, beloved. Yes, beloved, listen to the prophet's voice in manuscript 136. We are close to the time spoken of by Daniel the prophet. At that time shall Michael stand up, that great prince will stand it for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to the same time. And at that time, that people shall be delivered, every one of them that shall be found written in the book. And many of them that slept in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars, beloved. The Lord is about to do it. When he therefore shall see, the abomination of desolation. Get ready. And I'm just saying to you, with this explanation of the prophecy, you know what time we are living in. There's much more I could tell you, but I don't want you to be so confused with things that are happening around you, even if it is happening right now. I want you to be concerned with two things, the time in which we live and the need for preparation because the coming of Christ is very imminent. Bless the name of the Lord. And so, Yeshua said again, listen again.
And when he therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, standing where it ought not to, you know the time is here. Jesus is coming soon. But even before the coming of Christ, there's a time of trouble. Things are in motion. World events, you see in the war down there, you see what is happening with Israel. Why is Israel fighting the Palestines? Palestinians, sorry. Why are they fighting them? They believe in the Jews. Why is America backing Israel? Because Israel, listen carefully, Israel will support Christianity, democracy. The Jews would not support Christianity. And therefore, if America doesn't make sure, even with arms, that Israel maintain dominance over that spot of a ground, her position, her position the, the, for, for, for Christianity on the Pope to occupy that spot, to deceive the nation, that spot which Christ will sanctify, will not be possible. Have you ever wondered, one more thing I want to say to you, have you ever wondered how Christ is going to clear that spot from all these people when he decides to come? That's another lesson for another time that we can talk about. But I pray that my words tonight, the Bible says we have a more sure word of prophecy. Let us take heed and let us have a walk with God and be ready for his soon coming. Amen. Let us pray as we bless God tonight. Father in heaven, once again we have sought, as feeble as we may be, to understand your words in the book of Matthew 24, so that we may not be caught off guard, as did those Jewish people who did not heed your words and were trapped in Jerusalem and were destroyed under Titus. Help us to recognize that today the prophecy is being fulfilled as Christianity has compromised its position and has let the idolatrous standards of Rome be set up in their midst and become part of their worship. But you have a remnant. You have a small people who will not bow their knees to such idolatry. Help every one of us that are here tonight to be part of that remnant people that will not compromise. Let us not feel any sense of carnal security because we belong to a denomination. Because every denomination are being infiltrated by the idolatrous standards of Rome. But let your people, your remnant people, who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus stand peculiar in this hour. Keep us away from the things of this world. Help us not only that, but to recognize it is time for us to cut away from the things of this world and be ready for your soon coming. We thank you. We bless you and we praise you in no other name, but in Yeshua's name. Let the church say, Amen. Indeed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I hope that prophecy I read today, that it was clear enough for you. And if at another time you won't have any question on it after you listen it over and so forth, then I will be willing to take your questions on it, maybe on Friday night. Uh, but yes, but this is a very, very powerful prophecy that you need to understand and make some moves based on the words of Yahovah. Amen. 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 To those of you on Facebook, we thank God to have you as well. I hope Brother Terry, Sister Beverly is there. Uh, keep studying the prophecies as we continue next week, Wednesday, 
with last day events. I'm going to tell you that topic in the week because we are moving forward now. Ask God to help me. Ask God to, you, I want you to really pray for me um, because sometimes bringing these prophecies, we don't understand everything. We have to look at their fulfillment. We have to ask the Holy Spirit to really help us to be able to explain this thing well. And so we thank God that he's doing it so far. Let us take heed in the name of Yeshua. God bless you in Yeshua's name. Shalom to everyone. Shalom. Shalom, shalom, shalom.